Hi guys, my name is Mohit and uh, I have also enrolled for Anuj Kumar Sharma's DSA course and here in this course, in this very first lecture, he gave a few practice problems. He gave seven of them, so I will be solving them and for those of you who didn't understand how to start uh, making a program in Eclipse and how to write a program or you have doubts in any of these questions you can just look through this video i will leave timestamps if possible and let's get started so the very first problem is to take two numbers as input and display their product so let's go to the eclipse workspace make a new java project i will name this anuj Kumar DSA leave this as it is next okay finish okay Here let's create a new package, name it as lec lecture 1 practice problems, finish, let's create the first class which is hmm, take two numbers and put their product, okay product of two numbers we need the main function alright so the very first thing we have to do is import the scanner java dot util dot scanner this is used for scanning the uh, output window or where we give input it brings it into the arguments of the main function and we use the scanner object we use the scanner object to bring each of those inputs inside the program as we need them okay so over here we need two variables so int a and b next let's get those two inputs a is equal to sa dot next int we'll input integers here and then product so while naming the variables make sure that they are logical like num1 num2 and then you can name it as product here I've just taken a and b so this are some good practices while coding so you can follow those right from the beginning now after it's done we just have to print it sys out control space and the product of let's get those two variables a and b equals product all right so let's let's test this It's warning us about the scanner that it's not closed. Let's close that. So 
So the console was hidden here so you can go into show view and console it's waiting for two inputs I'll put two three and that's the right answer let's move on to the next question write a Java program to print the area and perimeter of a circle alright creating a new project I mean new class area and perimeter of circle again we do the same thing I'll just copy it from here import and then scanner oops okay so here the only input we need is the radius and with the radius we can calculate the area which is 2 pi r and perimeter or the circumference is 2 pi r okay pi r square So this is the circumference and this would be the area okay let's get the input a radius might be a floating number so we'll put it in double so when it comes to next double you can also input integers it will take it and won't throw any error but in the case that you put next int over here and then input a double or a floating number then it will throw an error radius okay let's keep it as r to make it simple let's define pi this is 22 by 7 here if you leave it as 22 by 7 it will calculate the integer form of the division what I mean to say is 7 3 is 21 it will just store 3 not 3.14 etc so in order to do that you have to specify one of the two numbers as a floating number so I'll put 7.0 and then it will store 3.14 and it will keep going just mentioned as perimeter this is area okay now that it's calculated we'll just print it sys out let's run this save it 
so it's wait, waiting for our radius so you could also give us this out here to make it more clear run it again okay let's give five so area of radius area of circle with radius five is 78 this is 31 you can check with your calculator or anything okay this might be clear it does throw a warning again to close the scanner it might be a good practice to do so let's move to the next one next question is write a java program that reads a number in inches and converts it to meters inches two meters Okay, I just closed the whole thing by accident. Okay, coming back to this one. Here we need to input the inches. We'll again keep it as double, or if you prefer, you can keep it as int. So 1 inch is equal to 0 0.254 meters, we'll just multiply it by 0 0.254 and we'll have our answer. So what's left to do is just print it out. We'll just print it directly. Input inches, 100 inches equals 25.4. 100 inches is 2.54. Okay, made a mistake here. Two point five four. Okay. Moving on to the next one. The next question is to print the greatest of three numbers. Let's quickly make a new class for that. 
greatest of three include main import java dot util dot scanner scanner is equals new scanner you could name it as anything Next, we need to take three inputs. I'll give a message for that. Enter three numbers. Then we'll name it as A, B, and C for now. So the logic would be if A is greater than B and if A is greater than C then sys out A. If not else sys out C. Now for those of you who didn't understand so this is simple if a is greater than b and it's greater than c so a is the greatest one but if a is greater than b and a is not greater than c that means c is the greatest why a is already greater than b so c has to be greater than b as well while being greater than a so that's why it's the largest one is c then next case would be if uh, B is greater than C and if B is greater than A sys out B else So here we already checked if A is greater than B. So it's the same case. We need not put this. Sorry for any confusion. Uh, so if B is greater than A, then already it will come here. And so if B is greater than A and B is greater than C, the largest one would be B. Else, this out largest one would be C all right let's test this out might have created a bracket problem yes okay save it enter three numbers one two okay twenty three thirty five thirty five let's test it again give the first number as the greatest one so again it's working second number as greatest one it's working no issues with that moving on to the next one write a java program that makes that takes a year from the user and prints whether that year is a leap year or not or not okay leap year problem so first we have to understand the logic behind when a year is called a leap year we'll name it as check leap year include this 
import it again Here we need only one input, we'll put it in an integer, name it as year, as seed or next int. Okay, so the logic for any year to be a leap year or not is as follows. So if the year is completely divisible by 100, which means if it's divided by 100 and leaves the remainder 0, so it's completely divisible. If it's divisible by 100, and if it's also divisible by 400, then we say that it is a leap year. else we say that it's not a leap year also if the year is not divisible by 100 and if the year is divisible by 4 Again, we say that it's a leap year, else we say it's not a leap year. Might have again created a bracket problem. Nope, missed out on S. This is why we should always keep brackets. Missed an if here, missed many things. Okay, no problem as long as we can find the problem. I have one more problem here, too many brackets. Let me fix that. So this closes here, this closes here. This else should come over here. So give another closing bracket here. Solved. We don't need that. Main class. Okay. Save it. Okay, we input the year. Let's say 1900 which should not be a leap year, that's right because it's divisible by 100 but not by 400 so you can check the logic on the internet, it is as follows let's check it again 2000, it's a leap year 2004, leap year 2022, nope okay, let's, let's move on to the next one What did I do? Okay. This is why we should also maintain proper indentation.
okay let's move on to the next one greatest number is done leap year is done write a java program to swap two numbers okay let's do that very easy one So we input the two numbers. By now you should have a good understanding about what I am doing. And then we create a temp variable, store num1 in it. Then in num1 we put the second variable. And then in num2 we take num1's value but we have already changed num one's value so we put temp which which we had already stored okay understood so we put here numbers after swapping you could just directly print them i'm just trying to make it more understandable Okay, let's test it out. One and two became two and one. Done with that. Okay, next one. Write a Java program to grade students based on their marks. Slightly lengthy one, but let's do this the final one for today. Student grading Okay, so Anuj Bhai had, uh, had taught us about switch case, but if you switch case, let me show you. Case. I can't make a case for this because if I put marks greater than 90, that would create a boolean value but case needs an integer see I can't make it like this I can put it as 90 but for this question we will need to use if else ladder so if marks are greater than 90 what happened we don't need the switch, okay. So if marks are greater than equal to 90, let's put, let's keep a grade value here as a character. Grade equals nothing, we'll put it later, okay. So grade equals A. 
So similarly we do for the rest marks greater than equal to 80 let's give that a B grade forgotten if here that will throw an error Seventy, sixty. Let's put one more. Fifty. Hmm. We put that as F, A, B, C. Let's give this D. Maybe one more. E and then F. Okay, let's test it out. Save it. And put the marks 95. Okay, we didn't print it. Grade is great. Okay. We didn't have a default case. That's the thing. May not have been initialized. So in this case, what we have to do is either we initialize it with something or what we can do is leave a general else case. So that by default, the grade would become F if none of the test cases or none of these expressions are met. Okay. Input 95, grade C. Let's try that again. 45, F. 65, grade is D. Okay. So I guess we are done for the day. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. All 7 questions we have solved. If you have any doubts, leave it in the comments. Anuj Bhaiya had also mentioned that he would be sending us these uh, presentations or the PDF but I couldn't find it on an academy or anywhere else uh, if you guys know where I can find it please let me know in the comments and thanks for watching